name is Stephanie Selesnik. I'm president of International Trade Information, and uh, we internationalize trade shows. And I also blog about the industry for Exhibition World and other assorted entities. Um, we're really excited about the session today, which is all in one, unmasking the illusion and embracing strategic partnerships. Before that, I just want to thank our sponsors, without whom we wouldn't have the setup we have. Our headline sponsor is Hotel Map, and the headsets you can put on, if, it's, if you turn it on and it's blue on the side, it's in English, and if you'd like the Spanish translation, it's in yellow. So there we go with that. We also have closed captioning that is um, it's sponsored by Interprefy, and silent conferences are our, partner, our partners for the headsets, because it can get a little loud sometimes on the show floor. So if you're having trouble hearing, just slip on the headsets. Um, you can ask questions via the app on Poll Everywhere. There's a little. Or if we have time, I'll take the microphone around for any questions at the end. And um, with that, I'm going to let you ladies get started. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for being here. We're so happy to see everybody's faces in this crowd. A lot of really friendly faces. So many from decades. <laughs> And really happy you chose to spend your lunch hour with us instead of eating, or you ate before and you were smart and you prepped. Yeah, you're probably hungry like I am, but we'll get through it in 40 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Leanne Velke. I am owner of Leanne Velke, Inc. I am a consulting agency focused on building complex registration websites and personalized attendee journeys. And I also actually spend a lot of time talking to a lot of people in this room, in this, uh, in this show, building my own strategic partnerships and um, really working those relationships. And I am Kristen Koenig. Um, I'm the Vice President of Ring Central Events, formerly Hopin. So I general manage that business um, and really been in the industry for almost over 14 years now, which is wild. We'll talk about that later. Um, and I'm really passionate about this industry and what we have to do um, in the long term to continue to innovate, push each other, um, and really create strategic partnerships so we bridge the gap um, between what we see in the industry right now. Yeah, we're excited to bring you a little bit of just a sort of laid back fireside chat, podcast style conversation. Um, we really believe we're all in this together and we are all better as a united industry. Um, no one's better than the other one, really. We're all in it together. I bring uh, 15 years of extensive CVent experience to this conversation, as well as nine years of being a business owner. So very excited to dive in. Yeah, and, and my career is a little bit different. Um, I started at CVent. I was one of their first enterprise account executives. Um, worked my way through account management. Um, we'll talk about how we know each other. And then um, worked for two agencies on the buyer side. Um, looked at 100 plus different platforms, which we'll talk about as well. Um, and now back on the technology side. So with that, there's a lot of experiences that I've learned over the last 13 years, and I think Leanne and I have a lot of um, brain power to give you guys and some key takeaways today. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick overview of our agenda. We already did our, did our intros. We're gonna give you a little bit of a, our backstory um, before we dive into kind of unmasking all-in-one. We're going to talk about the definition of all-in-one and then go through sort of categorization and uh, scale and comprehensiveness and um, how that relates to building strong partnerships. And then we have a few key takeaways for all the different organizers, different groups of people in this room from organizers to service providers and our tech partners. Absolutely. So, our story. Yeah. Our story. Believe it or not, Kristen and I have actually known each other a decade. And I know we don't look that old, but we have. <laughs> Going all the way back to my corporate days uh, at Biogen when Kristen was actually my account manager. Um, extremely key to our partnership while I was at Biogen. Yeah, so Leanne and I, I adopted her as a customer. Um, and I think, you know, one thing that was key to this, which actually stemmed this topic for today, um, was the consultation that her and I provided with each other and the partnership that we had. Because I think what's happening right now in the industry is everyone is 
really pushing this all-in-one narrative. And I think it means many different things to many different people um, and really un unblocking and kind of embracing that discussion of what it means to each and every organizer, tech service provider, as well as um, the, the agencies and organizers in the world. So I think for that, it's when we met and kind of how the story came about is really embracing what our backgrounds were and then kind of going from there. I know, we had a good laugh about how little we sort of knew back then and how much we've learned, but also how much has changed in the last 10 years and really how it seems there's this, this push to have this sort of all-in-one solution. And really the more that we've sort of talked about it, the more I've had these conversations with so many people in this room, there really is no all-in-one out there. and. We're just gonna put that, we're making the, setting the record straight right now. It doesn't exist. It is impossible to be all things to all people all the time. And it's a mindset we've both sort of leaned into and learned so much, I think, since we started working together 10 years ago. Yeah, it's wild, because when this, when we were talking in January, you're like, she goes, I have this idea for a session. Like, would you do this with me? And I'm like, of course, I will do anything with you. Um, it's it's really about making sure that as we're looking at technology, it's there is foundational platforms, and we'll talk about that and unpack that today. But there's complementary applications, um, which our partners, Pigeonol Live and Interprify Translation, like no one can do it all. And how do you really embrace that in your event technology journey when you're crafting your really strategy to your programs as organizers or agencies, as well as um, the organizers themselves? So. Without further ado, let's get into it. Yep. So to start off, we wanted to really go all the way down to the basics. And so we looked up the definition of all-in-one to provide that for us today. I know what's, ha what's happening with sound. Hopefully it's okay. And so the definition of all-in-one being combining two or more items or functions in a single unit, having several parts or functions, able to do the work of two or more things that are usually separate, in other words, being all-purpose, all-encompassing, compact, complete, one-stop, all, all different versions of this. Yeah, It was a wild definition for me, <laughs> especially <laughs> as we apply it to business-to-business -to -business technology, and what does that even mean? So, you know, you take a lot of different providers here in the room today, and they're all-in-one in their best-in-class technology, right? So all-in-one translation, or all-in-one here, like, there's so many applications of this, this kind of ideation or, or word that keeps being around the industry. Um, and we kind of compared it, and I know this is kind of more of a consumer example, but we compared it to um, the shampoo, the all-in-one shampoo story. So out there in the, even the consumer market, you have you know all-in-one shampoo or all-in-one shampoo and conditioner. But there's also individual products that can do that best in class as well. So I think that really shifted our mindset, and that's one example, and it might not apply, and you're like, what is this shampoo story? There's but so many examples. There's, there's so many There's examples. so many applications for this example, yeah. actually. It hits home on so many levels that I yeah. think if we keep, you keep going back to the shampoo example, yeah. you can see that there's a marketplace for an all-in-one shampoo and conditioner. You can see there are still a thousand and one other shampoos and conditioners separately. And there are so many combinations that literally none of us are gonna have the same ones in our shower at home, right? Yeah. There's so many, it relates to this conversation in so many beautiful ways. Yeah. Um, Kristen, I know we were talking at some point and um, we were talking about the fact that planners use a lot of different technologies actually. Yeah. So when I was at Freeman, many of you don't know, I was there like during and before the you know, I call it BC before COVID. <laughs> so I was there and I was leading um, the Fusion, some of you partners were in the room, the Fusion application, which literally was an API, an integration ecosystem to connect the market together. Because you can see that what happens with Salesforce, and we'll get into bigger examples in the B2B space, and you'll be like, wow, this is mind blowing. Why don't we do this in event tech? Which is, you know, why we're having a session today. But the whole premise of that application at the time was to really be, have a connector of all products in the industry. Wouldn't that be beautiful? They work seamlessly together and they're fitting each of the molds for the whole event technology space. 
Salesforce does that. So many other solutions in the market do that. Why don't we do that? So when we came up with this strategy and then, you know, obviously the actual C word happened, um, it really was embracing. And then for me, I, my team actually researched over a hundred plus technology partners. And I know that seems a lot, but there's hundreds of event technology providers in the space. And we had 120 partners that were being integrated into this ecosystem together. I know a few of you are in the room today, so thank you for your support during that time. But during that, Freeman actually did this research study that I was a part of, of is there a business case for this? Can this solve problems? And we learned that there was around four to six event technology platforms in a single company on average. Let that sink in. Four to six, at minimum, event technology products in a company. And we see that because everyone has the same logos on all their booths, right? So there is an opportunity in this industry to unite us from just that general stat. Yeah. <laughs> then you keep going. Sorry, I have the clicker and the mouse, so I'm trying to go here. So with that research um, that I that we founded at Freeman, there's really over 20 plus different technology categories in the market. And you're like, wow, that's overwhelming to us because how can we really decipher and pick apart? But other industries do this right before our eyes. And that's what I'm trying to you know, relate to this. Um, you can see here registration, lead retrieval, mobile app, content management, exhibitor management, housing, virtual. There, there's so much that powers our market and yet we're still so disparate from one another. And I think some companies are really embracing the technology integrations from a data perspective, but let's think of it from an application point of view, which is completely two different things. There's the integration part, but how can you make it so they don't leave your product? So if you're in our product or Swoogo's product or others, how can you make it that you have an all-encompassing solution directly in your product. Meaning, if you need translation, that's up here. Maybe it's not a category, but I should have it up here. Another 20 plus. <laughs> Can you put it in the product that it's not a link to go outside the product? Because as soon as you lose the attendee, that's when attrition starts, um, doesn't hap starts happening. And that's when adoption is a big concern. And like right now, we're doing translation, but what about in the application itself? Why isn't it there? You know, the, it's not there, yeah. yeah. So I think the whole point is from the research perspective, it shows that the more that we are embedding our solutions together, not just from a data point of view, we can really transform our market together. Yeah, and it's really trans transforming the conversation now into what is the best solution for our attendee? How are we going to give the attendee the best journey? How can we curate this so that they're having this most seamless, best experience they can have with our events, yep. it doesn't really matter what we're doing on the back end, <laughs> to be so honest. Um, and we can also see even, again, going back to that shampoo example, that there are so many different, there's so much space for everybody to play in this game together. Yep. There's, no, there's no one person that gets to be all the things. Like yeah. There is so much space for everybody and we're all winning at the end of the day. We truly are, and I think like what we, Leanne and I were talking about earlier is, you know, we, there's everyone in their product usually has chat polls and Q&A, right? Everyone has chat polls and Q&A. Um, and I was telling these partners, Kitchen Hole Live, hi back there. Um, I was telling them this story, but you know, we have customers coming to us, or you know, and, and Leanne is like, how can we do more with chat polls and Q&A? And sometimes you're like, oh, let's build it. Let's just go and build more. But there's products out there that are best in class, like Pigeonhole Live and others, or Interprify for a translation, that do it soup to nuts, and big companies utilize them. So having those in their products that like complement the experience should be embraced and not deferred, and not try to close. So it's more like the open ecosystem, I think, is becoming more embraced by the market, by agencies who want to be creative, personalized, and creating the best experience for the attendee. That's the example we were talking about earlier with the chat. Yeah, I think one of the biggest um, epiphanies, I'll say, that came out of prepping for this session was a shift in the verbiage from all in one to assessing our technology based on comprehensiveness. 
And when we started having this conversation, I actually had to pause for a minute because I was like, this is mind blowing to me. When we shift the conversation from trying to say, what is the one platform I can have where I can have all the things in one place? I get the draw, right? We get, we get the draw towards, it's one contract. It's less negotiating with your higher ups. It's less trying to get that budget if you can have it all under one roof. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the best solution for your event goals. And so when we shift the conversation to comprehensiveness of the software we're looking at, it really changes the way that we're looking at it, right? And we kind of had this, <laughs> this little graphic. Little we, graphic. We, we I love up. this graphic, by the way. <laughs> we Feel free to it. take pictures. Um, where we're comparing breadth and depth. And we realized as we're sort of trying to pull more and more things under one roof, it's where you get that whole mile wide inch deep analogy, right? Versus allowing companies to be great at what they're great at, where you can really get that mile deep interaction. You're getting that depth, and instead of just having this sort of watered down breadth, yeah. that we're somehow, some way, I have no idea why we decided we need all the things under one roof, and so we just need this wide, yeah. this wide net, that's sort of this mile wide inch deep yeah. sort of solution versus having this best in class yeah. experience for both your team and your attendees. Yeah, versus inch deep, mile wide, mile wide, inch deep. Like there's too many examples. And I, and I think from the comprehensiveness, you know, we, we chatted about this a lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. <laughs> there's a lot of conversation about this. Yeah, and I think, you know, we, the, the customers that I've spoken to recently, you know, they're coming to us with, you know, many of you in the room potentially, um, you know, you could have 50 things on there or 100 things that you're saying, let's do all of this in the product. We need every single thing, right? And then some of them are in priority order, some of them are not. So what is the must-haves versus the nice-to-haves? Because if you use this analogy of the inch deep, mile wide versus mile wide, inch deep, or, you know, however you're comparing it with the depth and breadth, how can you as you know, organizer or the agency or technology provider complement the experience to make it fit their priorities? So a lot of the customers that I'm working with right now, and I know you are, is really digging in deep to say, if you have 100 things on your list, what are the three or five things you cannot live without? And making sure that you choose technology that complements those best five things or three things and then the other ones, if they're not as, as best in class, there's so many applications you can integrate to these partners to make the solution that you want. And that's very similar to the big technology companies that are doing this today in the marketing, the MarTech, and the CRM tech world. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Well, I keep going. Well, there's, there's a slide on there's this. There's a slide like, on this. Get the clicker. Um, so I brought this slide up. I used this about five years ago. Um, but I wanted to bring it up again because I think it hits home on the point because you know a lot of us can say, oh wow, this is a lot of information, slightly confusing maybe. But I think at the end of the day, what we're trying to say is there's these marketplaces that are, that are really conforming around B2B and B2C experiences. And so if you look at Apple, Salesforce, Amazon, there are industries that while they have foundations and a lot of products here are foundational platforms, meaning they can operate the content delivery in the on-site, in hybrid, in virtual setting. But what are all the pieces that are coming on top? And I use this um, word as co-opetition. I love that word. So you do love this word. I do love this word. Um, open ecosystems, like integrating you know, the registration provider and embracing the registration provider that they choose or the virtual or on-site technology is a part of working with the client that that's their choice. They want those solutions and you must integrate together at the end of the day. And so when I'm thinking of these playbooks, I'm really researching this over the last five years, these three companies. The way that they went about this was so strategic and I think it, need, it needs to be applied to the event industry because I think when it's applied, then we are treated more like the MarTech stack. 
because when I'm, I'm working with a lot of our um, uh, cross-functional partners right now, which is uh, um, interesting being an events product at a publicly traded company that also have an events team, and a lot of what they're saying to us is like the complementary applications that fit into the tech stack. So does it integrate with my marketing solution, my CRM solution, and that journey for the customer is seamless. Because if it doesn't, it's really not hitting home on the right attendee journey and it's missing the points in the process to deliver not a great experience. So I wanted to give this example because I think we can all take a page out of these players' books. Yeah, I was going to say, I was even thinking about this the other day with Amazon and their partnerships with shipping companies yeah. and how Amazon went out and they wanted to do all their own shipping, right? And then they realized they couldn't hold the infrastructure for all the shipping of all their products. And so they started bringing on partners. They started bringing on drop-offs at the UPS store. You can drop off at Kohl's now. You can drop off at uh, Staples, I think because they realized they couldn't reach everybody with their own Amazon Prime delivery, right? And so I think it's a really great illustration of how the customer, the end user, is benefiting because now you can choose what's the easiest place for you. And I take this to heart because I live in Vermont and like there's really no Amazon drivers in Vermont. So we have to embrace UPS and Staples. I make a lot of trips to the UPS store but that makes my life a lot easier at the end of the day that they've really integrated those stores. I'm already going to Kohl's, I can drop stuff off there, right? Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's really creating this all-in-one solution for your customer, for your end user. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where the all-in-one kind of nomenclature shifts, to, the, to your point. So they're becoming an all-in-one provider through strategic partnerships. And, and this has not happened in our industry. I, I know I keep saying that, but I, I feel like the whole kind of customer journey that we're, that we're analyzing right now and that I'm looking at is how can we embrace that? Because that's what all of you are asking for. And so I think for all of these examples that we can take away today, and we have some more to share, is this, this can transform our industry. And then the conversation shifts so that events has a seat at the table in the executive level conversations and they're not pulled away because you can plug into revenue generating information. Anything else? Leah? That was it on that section. Yeah. I'm like, this was um, really, I think it was a really beautiful segue into curating strategic partnerships, which is something you've been really focused on in the last couple years, really. Well, um, well, at Ring Ring Central and at Hopin, like this was, we came out with the first app store, you know, first app store that was not just data, but also apps in our product, um, and that it didn't link outside, that it was in the experience. But even beyond that, I was doing this at Freeman. So from Freeman to Hopin, I learned a lot about these partnerships, and this was one of my old slides, but I put up there, some names are not here anymore. Um, but there's just so much in this industry, and you're, you're probably, even here, that I love about Event Tech Live, is you're investigating products you've never heard about before, because they might not be the big brands or the big names, but they might solve a problem that you've been wanting to solve that maybe the big brands can't. And so what I love about this is we have a huge ecosystem opportunity on our hands and shifting the conversation to being more marketing, um, marketing driven across the board. So I forgot about this slide. I know. <laughs> so I like to pull it all together because um, I love this example. When I'm investigating or my team is investigating and, and you can have so many examples on this is we went through the journey of comparing this to the Salesforce and all these other B2B models. But when you look at this and you really dissect the business, they're like, oh, I just use this platform. They might just use that platform for 70% of everything, but they might complement that with other products. So digging into where those other technologies are and actually mapping the journey of all those products so you can work with those products. And I think that's a key piece because it's missed in, in that space. So I don't know if you have any. Yeah, I mean, I think the beautiful part that we talked about at one point was when we can sort of lean into the embracing these strategic partnerships and creating an, a tech ecosystem, a tech stack within the company, unintended uh, 
bonus side effect is now we actually are getting access to a lot more support people and a lot more support teams. Instead of having one company and one support team you get to work with, yeah. you get to work with five now. Yeah. Like, how lucky are you that you get five people that really know how to help you execute that product and, yeah. and support you through your usage of that product? And a lot of them are already working together and a lot of them know each other's products. So sometimes you can get better support from a different support network, yeah. <laughs> actually. And I, and I know it sounds overwhelming, but I've been building this partner, this partner ecosystem before my new role, like for the last two to three years. It's all about the infrastructure of the partner program because it's not just about working with those five people. It's that those five people know that they're certified on all the products, they're integrated together, they're working together seamlessly, not trying to take each other's businesses, and trying to make sure that you're set up in the right way, and I know a lot of my agency partners and tech partners in the room can agree to this, it's mapping that out so everyone is successful in that journey and that no one is siloed. Because I think the partner term also has been very loose in our industry, and what does partnership mean to you? And partnership can mean, in, in my personal opinion, is, how can you make sure that both of your companies together create the best experience for your mutual customer? And that mutual- 100%. Yeah, so it's, for me, it's, it's I wanna work with whomever my clients wanna work with. And that should, that should be a natural embrace. And so as we're dissecting this and pulling this whole topic apart, I'm like, oh, this is a can of worms. And then we have so much to talk about. We can talk about this all day and go into detailed examples. We had to rein it in a we lot. Had to rein it in. We had a lot of directions yeah. we could have gone with this. Long examples. But I think the biggest thing in, in honing it all in is there's this is happening regardless if we embrace it or not. But if we embrace it, how much more activation, how much more adoption we can get together. Because I think going back to our history together as, you know, account manager and customer, even if my company couldn't solve what we are solving for, I, and I know they would have hated this, but I was recommending other products that I was finding in the space um, to help solve Leanne's needs. And together we Which formed- Which is a great yeah, don't way say that. to do sales, by the way, <laughs> just for any salespeople or sales team leaders in the room. I feel like this is so obvious, but I feel like it's worth saying because I actually still get feedback that people are not doing this. Kristen was amazing at really listening to what we needed, to listening to our pain points and listening to when we were calling her at probably ridiculous hours of the night, <laughs> frustrated that we couldn't get something to work. Kristen's like, let's get, let's get strategic. Let's get, let's figure out what the solution is here, even if that is not keeping the answer within the product. Sometimes you need to bring in something else. And that's yeah. really what makes an excellent salesperson, by the way, and I did a whole LinkedIn post on it because it's not being done and it needs to be done and I feel very passionately about this. You're giving me because, time. Because I had <laughs> such an amazing client uh, account manager experience with you 10 years ago. It was so collaborative. Like you were part of our team and more people need to lean into that. To we did not practice that. That's too no. many accolades. <laughs> no, but I think the thing is, is like, you know, we all are trying to solve and make our customers, our partners, whatever, you know, whether you're a tech partner in the room, an agency in the room, or um, a direct customer, and you have events that you're planning, at the end of the day, we all want to create better experiences. Whether that drives revenue, whether it drives community for your organizations, and even if it's not the answer that it's increasing revenue on the technology side or whatever have you, it's embracing the solution that's coming to the partner. And I think that's a really big thing and takeaway um, that we adopted. And it's still something that's an area of opportunity for all of us um, within this room as well. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. I think we're we're actually doing amazing yeah, on, on time. time. Yes. And. <laughs> So 15 minutes. I know. Look at us go. I know. Um, all right. So we wanted to have a few takeaways, and we really wanted to think about all of all of everybody who was here. So, Kristen, I'm gonna let you go. Yeah. You go first. 
So I'll go first because I have a lot of thoughts on here. Um, I think going back to the RFP conversation is organizers having defined goals and priorities that are set um, and not just a laundry list of features that you want within the technology stack. That is, and you obviously are going back and saying, oh, these ones can do yes, yes, yes to all of them. Can they? Is are it a they partner? doing it well? Are they doing it well? What's the depth of that? So it's the priorities and must-haves, in my opinion, is super helpful. And it's helpful for us as a now technology provider and as an agency. Like having those things that are clearly defined and outlined is super important so we can be more strategic with all of you. Yeah, it really starts with really defining what are your event goals. On the organizer side, we shouldn't be just going out saying, I need a solution. I get asked way too often, right? Like one of my least favorite questions in the world is what's the best platform out there? <laughs> I'm sure no one has heard that question before. And it's actually been in multiple chats where we, all of us who are used to doing this, hammer back with like 4,700 questions. And we're like, it's such a nuanced answer, right? I can't point you in the direction of what you need until you can tell me a little bit more about what your goals are. What are you trying to accomplish? What are your organizational goals? How are events fitting into your business? What does yes. it look like from an overarching point of view? And then individually, what are your individual event goals? What do you need to accomplish within this event specifically? And we need to have that conversation yes. before we're going out and trying to find the tech provider. Yes, I think sourcing tech is happening before that definition, which is why you know, you're like, oh, I'm having this event, we need this. And so I and think we're you, make, you make an excellent point too. I just like popped into my head, but the question I always say is like, is it internal, external? And if it's external, is it a trade show? All of these things are very different. I'm not even going to start different. with the questions because there's so many there's questions. So many. I'm not even going to go down that road because we can all do it. All of us right here, we can yeah. list off at least 30 questions yeah. that you need to ask before you yeah. can even entertain the tech solution. Yeah. So we need, to, we need to come to the table. Organizers, we're begging you to come with your goals defined first before we start diving in. And shameless plug for my friend Josiah, who's going to be up here at 2 o'clock, that's going to dive a little bit more into this actual exact conversation. Because while we recognized we could have done a whole direction of this session on this exact topic, we decided we didn't want to cover that. <laughs> Yeah. So Josiah is going to do that at 2 o'clock right here for us, so we don't have to do it. Yeah. And I think for... Um, do you want to do the service provider? Oh, yeah. And then I'll, I'll talk to service providers because this has literally been my, root, my life for the last seven months, is really going out and having these conversations with the partners, understand the landscape. And admittedly, this is something I'm relatively new to because I was kind of head down for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> and recently realized I needed to do some research. And as a service provider, my entire world has opened up. And this is my permission slip to you to reach out to any of the tech companies. I have been so welcomed by every single tech company, happy to give me demos, happy to talk about how we can create partnerships together. And what I've learned is there will be companies that you jive better with. There will be companies that align better with your own goals or your own values, and those are the ones to lean into. And it doesn't make any of the other ones wrong or bad. Maybe they're a better fit for someone else, but it definitely helps to understand the landscape and is extremely beneficial to build those relationships. We'll say that. Yeah, Leanne's like, Kristen, I had 10 different demos over the last two weeks. I've learned so much. Oh my God. And it was it so much, which was really the impetus for this session time. when I woke up on Sunday morning and I, in January. So what, five months ago, yeah. we started talking about this as my world was really expanded. And, and it's insane to really, when you really start diving into the entire landscape. 100%. And then I would say the last thing for tech providers, because I love technology, I can talk about it all day, um, is build your own partner ecosystems. And when I say build the ecosystem, I don't mean just integrate, partner. Partner with each other. Um, Coopetition is encouraged. 
Um, it's never something that's harnessed to the best. Open ecosystems are the future of technology and SaaS in general. If you look at the market that we share today and the landscape, and we just scraped the surface on this, and we know that there's fits for custom applications and you know all these various things, but I think once it's embraced by more technologies, really truly integrating with each other um, and on the data as well as app side, because that's two different things, and I. That's another session I could have talked about. Um, that should be embraced through and not just embedding a link. That should not be in the conversation. So yeah. that's what I mean. Yes, I love it. And my little ad, or I guess different spin, at least for the short term, I think the, the my personal opinion, <laughs> since we're all here for that, obviously, um, as you have customers coming to you, ask them what they're trying to solve for. And I would love to see more companies responding to RFPs with, I think it would go a long way to include partners on your RFPs. So it's one single signature they need to get. But by the way, we're also being extremely clear about who is providing that solution. And we're telling them, I do registration really well, and this is my wheelhouse but we don't really do apps really well, but this is a partner of ours that can provide you a world-class app, and we're gonna include that in our RFP so you have a total solution for your goals and your needs, and it's one contract you have to sign, which kind of goes to fit that all-in-one pain point, right? So how can we, I, I would love to see more companies doing this. I know a few of them already are, um, but I would love to see, I think it would re reduce a lot of friction for people if yeah. it's only one contract you have to sign and, and have your, I know what that process yeah. is like, the corporate days of trying to get signatures, yeah. so it's such a pain. And that's, that's a deeper partnership, right? Because that's legal, security, billing, and deeper partnerships, but they exist. We do it with choose to rent, um, you know, reselling software, Reselling and referring software is not new to B2B tech technology. It's just that it really hasn't been adopted within our within our market. I feel like that's a broken record. I need like a buzzer to saying that today. <laughs> but I think you make an excellent point because when I see RFPs and like, you know, ones that say yes, 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 down the chart, but then there's no notes. So if I say yes to registration, what we provide, and someone says, do you do AI translation? And I can say, yes, we do do it, or chat, yes, we do do it. But we also work with Pigeonhole Live. We also work with Slido. We also work with, <coughs> excuse me, all these other providers that can work in your tech stack. And what's so funny about this answer that we've been giving is part, the customers and the agencies have come to us, I'm so glad that you put these partners in here because we use that one. We use Pigeonhole Live. We use Interpretify. And this just is making, making us understand what more we can embrace so then when we do our big marketing operations stack i don't know if you've ever seen those but i saw the one at for ring central you know you have like you know 50 different technologies that are combining to make sure that your pipeline's getting back to the revenue organizations and it's mind blowing to see how it can fit in to the journey so i think that's a big plus cuz then you can see all the different ones so you can connect the dots between providers yeah, and now we're allowing <coughs> providers to be good at what they're good at. I opened your water for you. <laughs> we can allow the providers talking too to, be, much. to be great at what they're great at, right? Yeah. And by the way, we're being open and honest about who those partners are. 100%. And we're not trying to just say, yeah, we'll provide you that solution, and we're going out and yeah. white labeling someone else's I product. Think, I think at the end of the day, and I didn't say this before, but like flexibility and agility is key. And I know we have like, I see South by Southwest here and like a few of you in the room. You love flexibility, you love customization. And I think the more solutions become more agile in nature of their design and infrastructure, that's how we'll all win together. And instead of being cookie cutter or you know status quo. Um, but I think flexibility and agility come to mind as like we look at all these actionable takeaways of the market and where the transit. Then we come back here five years later and you're going to remember this session and say, wow, marketplaces are taking over the landscape. Mark my words. Um, it's going to happen in the next five to ten years and it's going to be embraced. The future is apps and app stores. The future is apps and app stores. <laughs> That's the key point. But 
We are Leanne and Kristen. Is there anything are else? Are you sure that's your name? Oh. <laughs> are, you, are you unsure of your name? We, I don't know. We have Do you a, have questions? Oh, yeah, we, we, yep. Am Sorry. I on? Am it's I been on? our first one since COVID, so a little so. nervous up here. <laughs> a little rusty. Can I get the mic on? Is it on? Okay. Um, so there were a couple of questions that came in. One, I'm just going to read them out for you. Um, I'm a founder offering a new niche, event tech. I'm also new to the events industry. What are the steps or your recommendations for integrating with existing platforms and beginning partnerships? Oh, I love that question. Yeah, that's a perfect question for Kristen, by the way. Contact so never me. Asked that. I can give you a roadmap. <laughs> I've yeah, I have a lot of thoughts about that. Um, you know, especially as a startup, Hoffman was a startup, and you know, we needed to get integrated, and it obviously starts with a conversation. I know probably some of larger players may not allow for that, but I think. What you, need to, what you need to do is really start, I don't know who the question is, but like start with what your product is well in and the complementary categories that it fits in and prioritize those categories. So if you're a founder of a registration platform, you know, integrating with session tools or hotel tools or air, airline, like what is those complementary things to your product and prioritize them? And because I've seen partner programs fail, which I could do a whole session on partner programs. Partner programs fail when they do too many things at once and they're not specifically organized and structured. And so when you're structured and you prioritize those categories, then you're embraced more because then you're actually mapping to their goals. And I love when partners are coming to me saying, hey, Kristen, like I would love to integrate to Ring Central events. How do we do that? What we're starting to do is, and this is going down the partner route, if you know Crossbeam or Reveal, those are um, partner applications that you can map and overlap customers and revenue together to see the total opportunity of that partner. It's a whole another discussion, but you can contact me after. Um, so when you do that, you can start prioritizing partnership types and understanding the true value add and then you can bring that data to the tech partner to say we can give you this many customers or this many integration points and that's truly valuable to the ecosystem yeah and don't be afraid to just reach out and ask and be open yeah. and honest and vulnerable and like, if i don't know we'll do that yeah and if i don't know or she doesn't know we probably can connect you with someone who does know too it's true okay and then our second question is uh do you think we should redefine the term and if you do what would be a better way of describing what is con what is right now considered to be all in one? I mean, I, hopefully we answered this question and it was asked early. <laughs> I mean, I would love I would love to embrace that comprehensiveness scale. Comprehension a comprehensiveness has been the thing since January that has stuck with me every time, and I could not be wait to be up on this stage to share that because. Comprehensiveness is really, really, I think, is the replacement, personally. I totally agree with you, Leanne. I think comprehensiveness, complete, like those platform, that those terms resonate to me. And to be, you know, to Leanne's point earlier, it's not that we're totally like ditching it overall. I still believe in the all-in-one attendee journey, but on the organizer side, it's more. It's more of a um, area of comprehensiveness and depth and breadth of how you're planning in the management side. Great. Um, one just came in, and this will be our last one. What is the one challenge within within the event space that is currently being underserved in tech that you've seen? Ooh, Ooh that's a big one, right? If we had if we had a dime for every yeah, just give Did a guess to me. I know who asked this question. <laughs> I am not. Was it Chris? You're the you're the future seer, so I'm gonna. No, you I am not. No, I don't even have an answer. Um, the problem, the biggest problem, underserved. underserved. I mean, I think it was clear in my presentation with Leanne. <laughs> <laughs> I do think it's integrations. I really, truly believe it's integrations. It's the biggest Achilles heel. Um, I see churn happen due to integrations. Um, I I kind of. I do, I do integrations, but I also think it's a little bit of a user experience and UI. Too many features, not a lot of value. I don't love features, by the way. I like value driven to the attendee. The attendee loves the application and they get value from it. That, that is, that is the better than every feature under the sun. So I think for me that's underserving is definitely integrations. And I don't mean like you integrate, but 
there's a partnership element, there's a deeper meaning to that. Um, and it's not just data, it's the app store. And I'm happy to share more. So, um, coopetition could be my new favorite word. Kristen's favorite word. Favorite, word. favorite word. Love I, that word. I coined that when I was at Freeman, so I can't take total credit. Yeah, I'll so. take it anyway. That's fine. Um, we want to thank everybody for coming. And, thank you uh, so much. You our next thank event you. is going to be a No BS Guide to Generative AI and how it can truly help planners excel um, in 2024 and beyond. And the ladies will be around if you have questions after. Thank you. Hopefully this thank opens you your mind to everything we can do.